Uh, uh. Good morning. My name is Tim uh, Sun. I'm the director of spiritual care. I work at the chapel. If you've been here before, I've, I've led a, a prayer chapel. This is not a prayer chapel. I get to actually preach a little bit longer than 10 minutes. It's something that I'm, uh, I love to do. Um, because I work at the chapel, I want to shamelessly announce that we do have a united prayer ministry that we resurrected, and that uh, please come on uh, Tuesdays to chapel office uh, to pray with one another, led by Song In and Perk. Uh, let's pray before the message uh, from Genesis. Father God, we come before you. I stand before you trembling, not because of the people here, not because of my feelings or my thoughts or if I'm going to share your words or if I'm going to be a hindrance of your love. But Lord, I'm in trembling because I expect great things from you because you are unthinkable, un incomprehensible God who loves us so much. I pray that not just our students, but faculty and staff will feel that today here, know that, be reassured of your love, not just today, but throughout the semester and as we're here at Gordon and as we talk to you and you are with us in our lives. Speak through me, open our hearts, help us to receive your word. In Jesus' name, amen. As I was uh, thinking about creating ripples and um, wanted to preach from Genesis about Abraham, this is a famous story. Uh, Abraham um, offering Isaac his only son. As I thought about that, I wanted to, I was thinking about what does faith mean? because Abraham shows his faith. So wanted to start with, what is faith? And we know that faith in Hebrew says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Right? If you believe in something that you already see everything, that's not faith. Right? Because you're not believing in God. You're believing in the thing that you already see. God is unseen. So faith is different. As we think about what faith is in our lives, where do we see that? We see it in our role models, people that we look up to. And as I was thinking about different people to share with you who I looked up to, I have many mentors. I shared with many people that when I thought about who encouraged me in my life, there's about 100 people that encourage me in my life, about 50 people I have intimate relationships with, and I know them deeply, so there's a lot. But one person I really wanted to share and thought about today as I was thinking about Abraham, who's sacrificing his only son. And as I've been married for 12 years, but I don't have children, so understand the heart of a father or heart of a parent, I got a chance to talk to my mom, who's in Korea right now, and I just called her this morning just to talk to her. I don't call her often. That's her complaint. And I should call her more often. Um, you probably, you guys probably have that too. So um, I called her and talked to her, and I just wanted to share what I saw in my mom who showed her faith to me. And this isn't someone that's not a pastor. This isn't someone that is a big name person that changed the world, but it, she changed the world for me. And she showed her faith in her life. As long as I live, I remember my mom as someone that is a prayer warrior. She would go to church at night to pray overnight. She would go to church early in the morning to pray. She would go... Uh, to meetings and um, for prayer meetings. So in Korea, whenever she wasn't 
At home, my first thought was she's at church. She's praying with somebody. She's in a Bible study. That's no matter where she went, that's because she goes so much. Not only that, I remember um, her ending her fasting for three days at 12 a.m. and stealing her uh, porridge, right, that she eats because her stomach can handle regular food after three days. And she prayed, fasted for three days for our family, for the church, for others. In U.S., even here, I remember she couldn't drive on her own, so I drove her to church at 9 p.m., 10 p.m., and stayed over overnight at church, praying together, sharing each other's prayer requests, her praying for other people. And I hear, I heard her pray every night or almost every night as I go to sleep far because my, our room didn't have a door. So I could hear her in the living room crying out to God, saying, God, where are you? God, you're my only hope. God, I need you in this. And that was my childhood. And I looked up to her and saw as someone that truly had faith, and not just faith, but had an intimate relationship with God. So our prayer wasn't, I'm hoping that this will happen. Prayer was to a real person, knowing that God would intervene in her life. So I think that's where I learned what it meant to pray. Yes, I read in the Bible. Yes, I learned and studied the Bible. I saw how Jesus taught the prayer. I saw how in the Old Testament, people cried out, nations crying out. There's lamenting. There's asking. There's an intimate prayer. There's a prayer where David prays for the other, for Israelites. And I learned that, but in my own life, I saw someone that prayed like no one else. Why do I say that? Because when we look at today's passage, and you look at Genesis 22, what is God telling us? How do we make an impact that's in, in this world that we make a uh, rippling effect to the world, impact people. And in where Abraham sacrificed Isaac, what I see in this passage in Genesis 22 are three, here I am by Abraham. He says, here I am to God. He says, here I am to his son. And he says, here I am to an angel. First, here I am, he says, after, God, uh, after these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, he said, here I am. And God said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. Go to the land of Moriah, offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. God asks Abraham to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. Isaac his, is his only son. Isaac meant not only his son, but was God's promise to Abraham. Right? This, God says, it's, in the Bible it says, uh, God tested Abraham, but this isn't all of a sudden God talks to Abraham. Abraham has lived his life of faith. When God told Abraham to go, he left his home and just left. God didn't say where, he just followed God, right? Not only that, he, fell many, he failed God many times. He disappointed God. He lied about his wife so, because he was afraid. Throughout the story of Abraham, God was there promising him, being there for him, being there for um, his, ne uh, his, his nephew a lot, He's also being there for him and giving Isaac in his old age. But here, God tests Abraham. I love this word because I know that testing is something that we love, right? This is like, yes. And I, I think being here before when it's God tests you, yeah, you know, but 
as I talk to many students and we have this anxiety over tests, it's like, ah, oh, God tests Abraham. That means God tests me, ah, oh, right? You know why tests are really hard or we have anxiety? This is my own, Tim's opinion, one person's opinion, as I say. I think it's because before, for me, in the 90s, when we talk about it, like when I was taking, like I was trying to just pass. If I pass, I was happy, right? But then the expectations get bigger, right? Your parents are like, no, C is not good enough. B is not good enough. A is not good enough. It's like, well, can, can you get higher? Perfect, right? You can't get an A. You have to get perfect, right? If you get one question wrong and you're an A, you're still not satisfied. Our expectation is so high, right? That when we take a test, you want to be perfect. Or you're just not good enough. But for God, God didn't test Abraham from the beginning. God waited. God was with him. God led him. When he was ready, then God tests Abraham. Why? Because he knows that he will not fail and that it was for Abraham's sake to know in order for God to bless him. God wanted to bless him so much, but we're going to see that at the end, that he tests him. And here, God asks Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, which is the promise. What I mean by that was that God promised over and over that Abraham were many, many descendants, and only way he could have was through his son. For us, we may not understand what that blessing is, for at that time, not having children was a big deal. Not having children was a curse. Blessings isn't just materialistic. It was having children was a blessing. And for me and my uh, wife who for 12 years trying to have children, not having that, we understand what that means. That that is such a blessing. And for them, for Abraham to sacrifice his only son, that is heartbreaking and also saying, that God saying, give up the promise of God to God, right? Sometimes it doesn't make sense because God promised Abraham, I will bless you through Isaac. And then it says, Abraham, sacrifice Isaac. It didn't make sense. It wasn't logical. But what did Abraham say? Here I am. And what did he do? He got up early in the morning. And he obeyed. And not only did he get, get up early in the morning, he went for how many days? Three days without, without a destination. God said, go. And he took his son and went. He, it meant that not only is he sacrificing his son, he's thinking about his son for three days to take his life and offer to God. And he was willing to say, God, here I am. God asks us, um, I remember when we grew, grew up, um, when I was in t uh, as a teenager, the things that we heard from my mentors was that God asks for the most precious thing in your life. Or when you become a Christian, you need to give up this. You need to give up non-Christian friends. You have to give up your secular music, which I didn't have a lot of music. I didn't sing much, but secular music, you have to give up all these things, right? to follow God. And I think the goal of that was so that when God saves you, you know that he's the most important thing in your life. But here, I don't think it's about for his salvation. It was for him to know that he trusts God, is willing to follow God. God is asking us for your life for you to follow him. But for me, that following him is not just going to missions, which is awesome. It's not just following God in um, working at a nonprofit, following God in this grandiose plan of, you know, I'm going to leave everything and just follow God. I think 
He also means follow God in our daily life, in the small things. Love the neighbor or the roommate or the sweet mate or the person on the floor that is difficult in your life. You know, forgive your family members that hurt you. Spend time with the person that, that style, you just can't handle that style, right? Like, they wear such a weird clothes, how can I ever talk to them? Like, love them, right? The little things in life. Give encouragement, words, not to your friends, but to your professors, to administration, to others. Giving life, God's saying is, giving your life means saying, here I am. Here in the story, the second, here I am, Abraham says to his son, Isaac asks, and uh, Abraham says, here I am, my son. In the verse, he talks about, here I am, he says, and, and Isaac asks, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. Think about what he's doing. His own son is asking, I understand where we're going. I understand that we're going to go and worship God. But where is the most important thing? And that is the lamb. That is what you will sacrifice as an offering. And Abraham, looking at his son into his eyes, is telling him, God will provide. As we give our lives to God, as we say, God, here I am, use me, it's not going to be, all right, now that I said that, everything's going to be easy. Now God's going to show you who you're going to love, and now you're going to be successful here, and now you're, this is God's going to lead you here, the, that mountain there, go there, everything's there, but it's going to be tough. You're going to have to go through times when even more than what Abraham had to go through, right? Pain, looking at his son, knowing what he, who he had to sacrifice, understanding that it's not easy. But what, where is your hope? That God will provide and will be with you. And how, how did God provide? And as God is asking Abraham, is he being unreasonable? How can you ask Abraham to sacrifice his own son? Because he will sacrifice, God will sacrifice his only son, Jesus Christ, for us. God knew the pain. God saw as he sent his Jesus, his, uh, God the Son, and he saw God the Father, saw God the Son, in earth, walking our life and walking to Calvary and dying on the cross for us and saying, putting his wrath upon his son and turning his face away, he understood what it meant. We're not called to repay what we have given. Your salvation cannot be repaid. No matter how good you live, no matter what you do for God, no matter how much you give yourself to God, you cannot repay your salvation. Your life does not equal Jesus Christ's life, the value. It does because he gave it for us. But your worth isn't there. God is asking you to just say, here I am, Lord. What you can sacrifice, the most precious thing in your life, will not equal Jesus Christ. God is asking. Say, here I am. As we think about the suffering that we have, the things that we are going through, think about what God has gone through and how he saved us through his son, Jesus Christ, and know that God will provide. And the third, here I am. As Abraham is about to kill his own son, the angel comes.
and calls his name Abraham, Abraham. And he says, here I am, he said. And angel says, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For, I, for now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. It's interesting. Why is God testing Abraham? So that Abraham can experience God. So that Abraham can experience God, how God provides that Abraham can see God. In in this passage, if you keep on looking, it's really interesting how Moses, the uh, the one that wrote it, uh, most people that think that he wrote the story, right, is talks about Abraham looking up and seeing the mountain. And then he looks up and sees the ram that God has provided. It's very important for us to see that it's actually seeing is very important. What are we seeing? What is he seeing? Abraham seeing the mountain is how God leads him. Abraham seeing Ram is how God provided for him. And the other important part is that he provided. If you think about it, God's the one that tested Abraham. God told Abraham, sacrifice your son. So if God tells him to sacrifice his son, and then he tells him, don't sacrifice your son, right? Stop. Obviously, God should provide, right? Like then, there has to, has to be worship, so God needs to provide. But Abraham calls out and says, because you provided, I'm going to call this place God who has provided the name. Why? Because as he's giving himself, it's automatic for him for that God, fact that God provided for him, right, has, it's a miracle for him. He expected that he will give his son up, even though he knew that that's not what God wanted, but he, God said it, he obeyed. And he expected if God's going to resurrect his son, that's great. Whatever God will do, he says, here I am. And as God stops him and provides a ram, he sees that God is a provider. In your life, do you see, as God asks you to give yourself, do you see God at work in your life? Do you see God providing for you? Do you see that God is with you daily? Do you see that God is providing and leading you in your life? The reason God asks Abraham, attests Abraham here is for this. In verse 15 to verse 19 it says, And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, Because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you. I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gates of his enemies. And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. God is fulfilling his promise to Abraham, God said, I will bless you through your descendant. And he's, now he says, I, now he's fulfilling his promise. But it's not just fulfilling. He's going to have many descendants because he has a nation of Israelites after him. But what God prom- promises is not just the blood descendant, it's the descendants through his faith. Because of what he did, what God wanted to do is that God's going to bless him so that we may be his descendants. That we are the blessing that his promi- God has promised to Abraham. God did not just want to say, okay, you will be blessed through Isaac and you will have uh, generations and generations of your descendants. What God wanted to do was make an everlasting impact 
through Abraham for his sacrifice and obedience for what? For all of us. What God wants to do is not just to test you and say, you know what, I'm going to bless you on this earth. You know what? You're going to get that job that you really wanted. You're going to get that person and marry that person that you really wanted. Yes, you're going to get that specific answer to your prayer. God wants to bless you so much bigger than that. God wants to bless you eternally. God wants you to make an impact that's eternal life, not just this short life. Not just one person life at this moment. Not just for your financial gain at the moment, but what God, how God wants to bless you is so much greater that that will make an everlasting impact. And for me, when a student of mine that I, I, in ministry, I knew her since she was five years old. She came uh, recently, we, we had a, uh, We've been, uh, we've always had um, conversation and different things, and she's been dating uh, this person for about six years, and they were going through a hard time because they wanted to get married, but the uh, guy's side, guy's parents really didn't give them approval, so she was waiting, and finally they got approval recently. So they asked me and came to me and said, hey, can you... um, please marry us. And then she was like, she's around 25 years old. And for me, like that was such an honor of someone that I poured myself into, that I did ministry to, that someone that would ask me to be part of their life, most important part in their life, to marry them. But I realized that's such a small impact compared to Many people that came to Christ and their everlasting life has changed because of God through me. And I pray that all of you will make an everlasting impact because you said, here I am, Lord, and that God will use you to bring others to Christ wherever you are, whatever job you have, whatever interest you have. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much that you want to bless us and that you bless us, that this blessing isn't lasting 30 years. This blessing isn't something visible at the moment, but that this blessing is everlasting. That, God, you are with us, and you're not just asking us to just sacrifice for the sake of sacrifice. You're asking us to obey you and follow you. And you're asking us to just say, here I am. Thank you that you guide us and you lead us and you move in our lives and move in this campus and be our God. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're dismissed.